what is going on guys Jesse 504 here bringing you my APL insurgents Regirock draft analysis so APL insurgents obviously uses the new Delta Mons the new Mega Mons from Pokemon insurgents which leads for like a more interesting meta because there's obviously more options and some of them are a lot stronger than what we have access to normally and um, it was a points based draft but like sort of it was like split tiers so there was like 20 points 18 points all the way down to four points you would have a hundred and twenty four points total to draft between 10 and 12 mons and uh, you'll pretty quickly tell how many I drafted based on my layout but um yeah uh, not really too much more to say other than I had fifth pick and when it came around to pick four um I knew exactly what I was gonna get it was either gonna be Mega Flygon or Dragapult and the person right in front of me pretty much gave me my choice so I decided that like yeah there's nowhere else I'm gonna be able to use Mega Flygon let's go ahead and use it here um it is an incredible Pokemon obviously it did catch a nerf um, where the 90 base defense used to be 80 and the speed used to be 130 um, which would have just made it downright busted but now it is allowed compared to where it was banned before and obviously it has access to a bunch of great moves um, obviously its ability is like Toxtricities but a little bit weaker um, but the trade-off for that is that it has Bug Buzz obviously it has a dragon 105 base power move that is sound based it has a rock based sound move uh, as well and it has amazing uh, move pool it got access to Draco Jet which is uh, dragon priority it has of course U-turn for momentum uh, coverage out uh, pretty much for anything that I want it for and then uh, it also got first impression this generation if I wanted to rock with that which would now be stab but uh, not really too much to say other than 20 points very expensive but obviously it's a mon that you're building around you want to spend big money on that um, and you can clearly see only did 10 rounds uh, because that's all that I drafted only 10 mons which meant that I could have around 12 points per mon um, so that was kinda like the middle tier and you'll see how my draft kinda gravitates around it but um, coming back to me um, round two a mon that I completely did not expect to get I looked at it and I was like yeah this thing is so powerful how is it still here Hoopa Delta Unbound um, it's an incredibly strong mon again great coverage can run physical or special um, Heavy Duty Boots gave it a new option this generation. Um, access to Volt, uh, Volt Switch or U-Turn uh, if they have if I'm running Physical or Special, and of course if they have a Ground type, I can just run U-Turn. But um, obviously incredible both of the attacking stats and also a great Special Defense. And uh, while the Physical Defense is meh, it no longer just dies to U-Turn. So, um, it's something that is, I'm really excited to use it personally, um, and I think that it pairs with Mega Flygon really, really well, um, but that's mostly just because it forms a real nice, uh, start for a Fairy Dragon Steel core, which is obviously one of the cores that I value a lot in draft, um, I feel like those three types together, you just get some nice offensive, defensive synergy, and... That's kind of what I decided to grab, especially heading into my round three pick, where I pretty much found a great steal. Um, obviously, I didn't want to spend too much on it, but um, Empoleon. Um, I think that this thing is really nice here. Obviously, great mixed bulk, and um, the offensive stats are pretty good as well. Um, if it wants to run that, but obviously, great defog and rocker. Um, I'm pretty sure it resists every type that Mega Flygon is weak to, and it's also a really strong defogger, like I said, because both of uh, my mons before it are weak to rocks. Um, so that's kind of another thing that I really wanted to consider this draft, was that I drafted two real strong threats, but they're weak to rocks, so having a really nice way to remove them in Empoleon is, I think, going to be something that's going to save me a lot. Um, 
Additionally, it's a mon that can kind of come to a lot of games. Just fantastic type in Water Steel, and um, really just can uh, take hits, can dish them out if it wants to, but also can um, just do hazards for me. Um, that's kind of all Empoleon does. But uh, yeah, and then in round four, I decided to grab a mon that. Uh, I had it on my plan, I didn't know how much longer it was going to last, and that is Delta Tangrowth. Um, obviously it has uh, the same base stats as Tangrowth, but uh, in my opinion a better typing of ground and fighting. Um, it also got access, uh, or it has access to spikes, rocks, synthesis for recovery, it got body press thankfully, um, which is one of my favorite new moves introduced in Generation 8. And its only real downfall is that it's not very especially bulky, but one of its weaknesses is the water type it can potentially have an immunity to with the dry skin ability, but can also just go rough skin if I'm facing down a mon with that likes to use multi-hit moves or something like that. Uh, Delta Tangrowth can really help that way. Obviously a really nice physical wall, and can pair with Empoleon uh, or even Delta Hoopa to make a really nice physical special bulk combo that's going to be really tough to break for the other teams especially considering that this tangrowth has reliable recovery in the form of synthesis um i don't know there's not really too much more to say other than the fact that yeah i'm kind of blowing through my points a lot here and uh, at this point i kind of figured out everything that i wanted for the rest of the draft making sure that my points were going to line up um Realizing that I made a complete miscalculation and then fixing that accordingly. Um, but obviously, um, these four mons I feel like are mons that can come to pretty much every game, uh, no matter the matchup. Obviously, there are going to be some weeks where I just don't want them, but uh, as of right now, I could safely say that uh, in any matchup, these four could potentially come and offer some form of support for the team. Um, up next in round 5, uh, sticking in that 12 point tier, Delta Darmanitan. This was a mon that uh, my uh, team never quite aligned with it for speed tours, but I always really wanted to grab it there. And um, obviously the one thing that it doesn't have compared to the other Darmanitans, uh, Galarian and uh, regular, are is that it does not have like an attack boosting ability in either Sheer Force or Guerrilla Tactics for the other two. Instead, it possesses the abilities of Unnerve and Wonderskin. Um, I'm pretty sure Wonderskin is not allowed because it is pretty much just an evasion ability. But um, uh, this uh, Darmanitan obviously can still hit incredibly hard with base 140 attack, can kind of safely spam knockoffs really well. You um, turn out, obviously, and some nice coverage as well. Uh, the one downside is that guys didn't implement the new moves uh, from Isle of Armor for the Delta Pokemon. So while this thing could have potentially gotten access to Poltergeist, it did not yet because those just didn't get implemented, which fair enough. But um, yeah, so that's kind of all I really want to say about the Delta Darmanitan. Um, going into round six... Um, I just saw a mon that I've never used, but I really wanted to try it out, and um, here I decided to grab Porygon 2. Um, obviously a mon that is incredibly bulky thanks to its Eviolite, um, or it's, uh, it can run Eviolite uh, pretty well. Um, with Recover, it got access to Teleport this generation, which it, or it always had Teleport, but Teleport gained a newfound function this generation. And Porygon 2 being able to use uh, Teleport, I think it's one of the premier Teleport mons next to like Slowbro, um, at Slowbro and Clefable. Um, but obviously with the Eviolite can run physically or especially bulky, which kind of just again does what I needed to do. Um, Trace is a real nice ability uh, I found um, because I can kind of just rock out with it. And tracing just all sorts of abilities, whether it be like type-based immunity abilities, or um, just like I've seen Portagon 2 be really nice when it traces like Regenerator or Intimidate uh, as well. That can be another strong ability, but obviously abilities play a big um, factor in this game, especially with Insurgents where the abilities are kind of, some of them are more kicked up. There's a lot more strong abilities. Um, 
having just a real nice trace user to sort of abuse those is really nice. Um, I don't really know if there's anything else to really say about Porygon 2 other than fantastic move pool, real bulky recovery, again, uh, forming a sort of nice defensive backbone for the team. Um, yeah, kind of a one mon can do it all for the defensive side other than hazards, really. But that's you can't ask a mon to do anything unless it's Mew. Um, so that's my uh, first six. On to the seventh is Delta Tentacruel. Um I had my eye on this one uh, before uh, I even like really made a plan. I just found out in six points it's really strong. Um, I think like the archetype, if I had to describe it, it would be spike stack offense for this team. And having another spike stacker as well as a toxic spiker in this tentacruel is really nice. Additionally, um, another defensive pivot uh, mon, obviously, but it's not really a pivot, but it has access to spore which is one of the strongest moves in the game, 100% accurate sleep is always amazing, uh, and it's one of the faster sport users as well, with 100 base speed. Um, the one thing that it's missing, really, compared to regular Tentacruel, is that it is not a rapid spinner, which uh, I didn't realize until a little bit too late, but at this point, there wasn't really too much left uh, for rapid spin, uh, though, like, and... My draft isn't quite as hazard weak anymore, uh, so uh, I'm often just going to be forcing opponents to run defog for myself because I'm just like such a spike stacking offense. Uh, having these great spikers in Delta Tangrowth and Delta Tentacruel to just do a lot. Additionally, it does have another immunity in Storm Drain, so I know that there's like a little bit of rain and weather coming around, but having uh, two water immunities is really strong um if people are considering even bringing water moves they have to just be worried about uh like about 20 percent of my team completely blanking it uh yeah going into round or er, after round seven i just did a quick scrimmage um against someone else just a nice practice match found out that yeah this team is incredibly strong i liked uh, using these mons uh together i used the first six but it was just like a seven on seven prep um yeah, but going into round eight, um, just kind of just patching a couple of holes. Jolteon, um, it's fast, um, and it can potentially ser uh, serve as a cleric. It's also an electric type with Volt Absorb, giving me a nice immunity there. Um, obviously, its move pool is abysmal. Um, electric move and Shadow Ball pretty much are all that it has, but thankfully it can run Heal Bell. It can run screens. Um, so its offensive move pool is lackluster with uh, the removal of signal beam and hidden powers, but it still has some utility that makes it uh, some slightly viable, and for 6 points, I still felt like, um, yeah, I, I would pay for that. Um, obviously, it's incredibly cheap at 6, and for what it offers to me as a really fast mon uh, for support, I would gladly take that at 6 points. Uh, so that's kind of why I decided to grab Jolteon. And uh, heading into round 9, uh, I had 24 points left, which meant that I wanted to buy one last big heavy hitter, Victini. Um, obviously, 100s around the board for the stats is incredibly strong. Um, another mon that's weak to Brox, uh, I've avoided that for a while, but I feel like Victini just offers so much with all of the moves that it has that are... It has some incredibly high base power moves. Um, V create uh, bolt strike, um, blue flare. Uh, if I wanted to run special, um, additionally, its ability uh, makes it so that V create doesn't miss. And then Zen had about like ninety nine percent accurate. Uh, additionally, has access to U turn, making it a fantastic pivot. Uh, scarfed banded or um, specs is great at all of those sets, depending on what needs to come. Also can run bulky with its 100s all around, which I feel like people can sometimes forget. Just because it's a mon known for its incredible offensive move pool doesn't mean that it can't uh, uh, perform in a defensive role. Uh, I like to think of it as a more offensive Mew because it has access to these uh, signature moves that Mew does not, but in exchange it kind of has less um, defensive utility with a little bit 
uh, less defensive moves. So that's kind of why I decided to grab this Victini. Um, I figured, yeah, in 18, uh, it was kind of the strongest thing for my team left. Obviously, there was a couple of other fires, I believe, Infernape and Volcarona were both there. But um, they both kind of doubled up on types already. But that's really all I have to, or all I want to say about my Victini selection. And heading into round 10 with only 6 points left, um, I wanted to get Avalok. Unfortunately, that was taken from me, so I decided to grab the next best thing, which was Mr. Rhyme. Um, just an ice-type spinner. Um, so we did really well after drafting two Rocks Weeks Mons. We drafted 6 in a row that were not. And then we just finished the draft off with two more, which is kind of, I think, funny. But Mr. Rhyme loves to wear its boots, um, which make it incredibly resistant to hazards. Um, additionally, a pretty solid move pool and stats to kind of let it do whatever it wants, uh, pretty much. So that's kind of all I really want to say about my draft. But uh, until next time, Jesse504, out.